Asi, welcome to Secrets of Happy Parents. I'm so glad you could join us. Nice to be here. Well, I have been following you in the news again lately, taking some heat for your willingness to challenge conventional parenting approaches. Tell us what's wrong with our usual parenting practices. Well, in a nutshell, they tend to be focused more on how to get short-term compliance, answering the question, how do I get my kid to do what I want him to do, rather than on our long-term goals for the kind of people we hope our children will grow into. And as a result of the focus on short-term obedience, we tend to use variations of bribes and threats, rewards and punishments to uh, control kids. When it turns out that not only does that not work um, in the short and medium term, but it makes it less likely that kids will grow into caring, compassionate, happy, ethical, responsible people. Hmm. So you're saying that it's actually counterproductive to use the approaches that most parents today use in Western well, culture. That's right. It's not just ineffective, it's counterproductive. So, for example, we find that kids who have punitive consequences enforced, you do this or here's how I'm going to make you suffer with timeouts and grounding and loss of privileges and scoldings and spankings, all of this gets kids to be more self-centered. So they're now asking the question, you know, what do I have to do and what happens to me if I don't do it? Um, rather than focusing on why it might make sense to do this rather than that. Not to mention the fact that our relationships with kids, which is the most important feature of parenting, um, our relationships become warped and strained. And every time parents lay out consequences, here's what you have to do or else, kids tend to be about as happy to see us coming as we would be to see a police car in our rear view mirror. The flip side of this, rewards, is where we're saying to kids, in effect, if you do this, I will give you that, where we dangle goodies in front of them, stickers, gold stars, uh, desserts, or even sometimes just a verbal goodie, like, good job. And now kids come to see us as, goody dispensers on legs, not as caring allies. Rewards and punishments are not opposites. They're two sides of the same coin, but that coin doesn't buy very much, and it actually does a fair amount of damage. Hmm, so I thought that we were supposed to uh, reward the positive behavior we see in our kids and, um, you know, uh, give them positive attention. Uh, when they do something we like. Is there any place where that's appropriate? Tell us about acknowledging a child versus praise. Well, let me take the first part of the question. Mm -hmm. What you have described has been um, uh, framed by one researcher as sugar-coated control. Mm. What kids need from us, in addition to guidance and support, um, and feedback, what they most need from us is not just love, but unconditional love. They need to know that even when they screw up or fall short, we still care about them. In other words, that they are loved for who they are, not for what they do. The most destructive thing you can do with a child with respect to the love issue is to make the love something they have to earn. Now, in that context, we can understand uh, love withdrawal techniques like time out, which feels to the child like the care is being strategically withdrawn until the child obeys, does whatever we want. And conversely, what you just described, positive reinforcement, is conditional love. It's not just different from what kids need, it's the opposite. It's our saying to children, only when you impress me, only when you're well behaved, only when you jump through my hoops and do what I want, will I say, good job, I really like the way you, only then do we give them the high fives and the big smiles and the hugs. And that's poison. 
Most parents who do this aren't doing it to be destructive of children or to be conditional parents. They're doing it because they have never been invited in most cases to reflect on how children need that unconditional support. Again, that's not to say we don't intervene when they do something wrong or that we don't express enthusiasm when we're pleased with them. But if they come to see our reaction as the point, then they're not interested so much in reading a book, in drawing a picture, in sharing and helping someone else for its own sake. Now those activities are just a, a means to an end, and the goal is to get our approval. So kids get hooked on the praise. That's why, in answer to the last part of your question, we have to think hard not just about the way we're expressing enthusiasm and support. We have to think about our goals, because if the objective in acknowledging a child is to make the kid do it again, in crude terms, to reinforce the behavior as if we were training a puppy, then it doesn't matter what words we use. The kid understands at some level he or she is being manipulated, and that is not good for our relationship or the child's growth. Hmm. So really, what you're talking about is what happens long-term to our kids. Yes. yes, you may have be able to control their behavior in the immediate moment, positively or negatively, but what you're really talking about is the ultimate lesson they're learning and how, who they're becoming long-term from this. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about that and how, what the, maybe, you know, how do kids uh, become who they are based on what you're describing as the normal parenting behavior. Yes, it is all about the long term. When I do a workshop uh, with parents, or for teachers for that matter, I, I almost always begin by asking, what are your long term goals for your child? How do you hope your kid will turn out even after he or she has moved away? And everywhere I go, I get the same kind of answers. Uh, rural, urban, suburban communities, you know, uh, teachers, administrators, parents, People tend to say, I want my kid to be happy, to be ethical, to be good decision makers, to be critical thinkers, lifelong learners, caring, ethical, that sort of thing. And so then what I do, and this is what I do for a living in my books and in my lectures, is basically to say to people, you say you want this, so how come you're doing that? Mm -hmm. And then, then what we have to ask is, given what your long-term goal is, what do we know about what helps? And what do we know about what hurts? And much of what hurts turns out to be the conventional wisdom, the garbage you get from shows like Super Nanny, mm. the stuff that you find with two-thirds at least of the books in a parenting section of a bookstore, or the um, syndicated columnists who write on parenting issues. Most of those people are not asking the question, how do we help kids to become happy, healthy human beings, and how do we meet their needs? They're asking the question, how do we make kids do what we tell them to do? And so we have to understand that this is not just about finding a new technique. It's about making sure that what we do with our kids on a given Thursday morning um, is likely to be consistent with the long-term objective. So, for example, let's say we, want, we hope our kids will not just be self-centered, that they will grow into people who will be genuinely concerned about the well-being of others. Mm -hmm. Well, that has certain implications for what we don't do as well as what we do do. For example, if we wanted kids to be genuinely concerned about others' well-being, we would never praise them for sharing. Good job, Diana. I really like the way you shared your uh, brownie uh, with Melissa. You're such a good sharer. Two studies have found that kids who are treated that way with a, you know, a verbal doggy biscuit for helping tend to be less helpful and caring than other kids. Oh, because my goodness. They've, they've learned that the reason to help isn't to make Melissa happy. It's to get that reaction from mommy.